Hey, what's going on there, folks? Welcome back here. It is the Earthmaster on this end. A Wednesday night, February 14th, 2024. Valentine's Day there. It is about 10 o'clock here, p.m. California time. Latest activity here on the Earthquake 3D globe. Let's see what we got here for tonight. Looks like a 3.0 down into the South America region there in the green flag. I uh, did see a little bit of activity stirring up over here across New Zealand area northward here recently some deep quake activity uh, triggering once again into this area of the trench uh, look at that 4.5 almost uh, well almost 600 kilometers deep there into the subduction zone uh, a little bit after that seeing some uh, subsequent shallower activity there across the region uh, south and north up here following that deeper activity so watch potentially watch for some further activity up here across that region it does look like things are uh uh, starting to build up there across the area. New Zealand, uh, 4.1 earthquake coming in earlier this afternoon. 161 kilometers deep here. I know what's in this area. Um, it's not specifically at this area, but uh, it is into the subduction zone here. Very deep here across the Hikarangi subduction zone. So let's go over and check out what's going on there across the... Uh, across the area here. I got a bunch of other stuff I'm looking up. That I got to check here real quick. I guess it helps if I turn off my phone here. All right. Let's go over and check out the GeoNet servers here real quick and see what's going on from New Zealand. Uh, 2.5. Where's that four-pointer? Maybe this was there yesterday, right? Four-pointer? No, but that's five kilometers there. So it's not showing up there, I don't think. Probably going to be in the, uh, the all magnitudes out here. Unfelt. Because of the depth of that earthquake, I doubt uh, too many people felt it. There's a Kermadec Island uh, earthquake here. But uh, specifically, I'm looking for that deep one. Now, there it is. The uh, New Zealand folks here reporting this as a 3.7. Still fairly deep, though, into that area. Uh, while the USGS is reporting that as a 4.1. Either way, uh, we could say that definitely some heightened activity out here across the plate boundary. It has been pretty quiet out here recently. Uh, in terms of uh, earthquake activity. It looks like it's starting to fill in slightly there. Uh, movement here across the area today. Um, fairly active out here. We did see a 5.8 further south into the Vanuatu area. And a lot of shallower earthquake activity here uh, across this area of the plate boundary. The latest one does, a, uh, does show a 5-pointer way up here in China. But far as up here across the western areas of the Pacific plate and adjacent plate here. Uh, looks like that 4.8 there in Japan. Northern edge of the Kuro Kamachaka showing some movement here. Keep an eye on this area. Uh, for the Alaska area, did see a little bit of movement shaking out here. Um, right around the Denali area, it looks like. This originally came in as a 5-pointer, but looks like they downgraded this to four to a 4.7. Way underneath this area, 109 kilometers deep here. Uh, definitely some fault systems out there that... Uh, are shown some movement in the deeper levels into the Pacific Northwest. A handful of earthquakes out here. Uh, now that could have something to do with the tremor activity that we're seeing across the region. This is today's tremor. Uh, about 452 epicenters of tremor here. A little bit here in Vancouver Island range and also down into the Oregon area. Somewhat elevated. It's been this way uh, for the last couple days here. So we'll have to keep an eye on this. See if this becomes... Uh, and it turns into a, a decent sized tremor event. But it does look like it's straining some of the areas here at the surface levels. Uh, this looks a little bit more elevated up here across the Washington area than normal. Uh, so we'll continue to watch that area. Not a whole lot going on here across the Oregon area for now. Uh, looks like maybe a, a couple smaller earthquakes here in the Newberry Volcano area. These are generally very, very small earthquakes. Uh, across the area of the West Coast. Well, Northern California looks a little quiet here across the Reno area, though. Still seeing some earthquake activity uh, over the last... Let's see what we got over the last 30 days or so. This has been kind of an ongoing thing here across the uh, Reno area. We've seen a little bit of movement here. Uh, north of Reno here recently. And uh, the more recent swarming is down here, though. So a couple different areas showing some heightened movement. That's generally a sign here of some strain across the area on a broad scale we'll have to watch that there's really been no uh, main quake there's just been a, a bunch of little microquakes here 244 of them 
uh, there around Steamboat, Nevada area, just south of the uh, Reno region. All right, uh, what else we got here across the area of California? No major swarms up north. Let's take a look down south here. Looks like one little earthquake. Uh, La Habra area, 1.1 around the Los Angeles region here. Far as in our swarming area and the San Andreas Fault, there's a couple earthquakes here off the San Andreas Fault on the North American side. Got to watch that because that's normally a sign of uh, some migration specifically just off the plate boundary. Uh, looks like both of those earthquakes there were early this morning, but uh, we'll continue to watch that. As far as our swarming region down here south in the Salton Sea area, it looks pretty quiet. Not really seeing any uh, further earthquake activity, and I did double check some of these seismograph stations here uh, around the Southern California area. And uh, here's one nearby the Salton Sea area. All three of these are literally within, uh, well, a few miles of each other here. So this one here looks decent. I really don't see too much earthquake activity showing up there. Uh, a couple smaller earthquakes here. Um, I, I did wonder, though, about these little measurements here, these kind of drawn-out measurements. It kind of looks like magma, but it doesn't really match up. If these were all matching up in terms of time frame, because there's some type of activity on this one as well that kind of looks like magma, magma uh, below the surface. But... The times here do not match up um, with each other. Uh, for example, eight, eight, zero, 0800 here, uh, the zero, 0800 here is there's nothing. So you go down here and just before 9, there's a little bit of uh, movement and not so much over here. So not for sure what that is, what's making this uh, vibration out here. It could be something that comes on uh, who knows what maybe every half hour or so, but uh, it's making a little bit of noise on the seismograph stations out there uh, around the Salton Sea area. I'm not for sure if they got, uh, uh, well, they got an airport out there, but I don't think that uh, would be what's making that noise. Either way, continue to watch that. Uh, seeing a little bit of activity further south here of the border into the Gulf of California once again. Um, Got to watch that because we have seen a, a decent swarm of activity here recently. And since then, things have been elevated there across the West Coast. So we'll see if we get uh, a little further push of uh, strain out here across the West Coast. All right, uh, what else we got here? Yellowstone National Park. Not a whole lot going on up here for now, at least according to the USGS map. So just double check just to make sure. See what's going on here. Doesn't look like there's too much activity. There's a little spike of an earthquake here uh, within the last hour or so. 0530. This looks like the right time, right? E yes, it is. Close to 0600 on here, so that's good. Uh, yeah, not a whole lot going on there across the Yellowstone area for now. The rest of the country, fairly quiet. Uh, South America is still seeing a lot of activity down here, but... Uh, not really seeing that on the USGS map. Got to go to the uh, EMSC model here. Quite a bit of activity stirring up here. Um, some deep activity followed up by subsequent shallow earthquake activity. So it looks like maybe this may be getting ready to produce some further large-scale movement. Uh, I did see a 5.2 out here in the Antarctica Pacific plate boundary here. Now that region is a divergent zone. That area is going to be roughly right about here separation of the plates so to speak uh that earthquake here is uh it's fairly recent but it looks like it's a little bit older than some of these other quakes over here so we may be getting a little strain out here uh, from that divergent boundary activity uh let's see here there's 5.1 way up here did we cover that one let's see Well, USGS reporting this is a 4.9. Looks a lot bigger here on the globe. Uh, so take your pick, 4.9 or a 5-pointer. One of the two. Uh, still seeing quite a bit of activity here across the southern edge here of the Java Trench. Not so much in terms of momentum across the plate boundary northward, but uh, uh, could be seeing that here very soon. A little swarm of activity up into the uh, China area, it looks like. It's going to be this movement right about here. 5.0 and a 4.5 here, literally within minutes of each other today. Uh, earlier this evening. Fairly shallow as well. 
Uh, down here across the Red Sea area, we've got a 4.5 coming in here. That's uh, obviously a zone that does see quite a bit of earthquake activity. Uh, not recently, though. This area is, area is a divergent zone. Separation of the plates, so to speak, right across this area. The Atlantic Ocean looks fairly calm, clear. Not a whole lot going on here across uh, the area for earthquake activity. Did see some movement earlier this morning, uh, but I'm going to make a slight adjustment here because I believe that was past the 24-hour mark here. Uh, USGS isn't showing it, so that means I had probably about 26 hours or so on the globe. Try to keep it at about 24 or so. Um, Hawaii. What do we got for Hawaii activity? Mauna Kea? Mauna Kea, 1.9 coming in here. Uh, just on the south flank here. I was just reading up on that one. Uh, on the volcano site. I'll have to cover that uh, a little bit later. But uh, it's very interesting. They, they still think that that volcano could be a future threat. It has been awfully quiet here. Awfully quiet. Uh, with no eruption here in recent history. But uh, they still think that that's capable of producing some large uh, eruptions. As far as the Kilauea volcano goes and Mauna Loa, well, still seeing activity out here across the uh, region, the Pahala area. Doesn't look like any a major uptick, but uh, let's see what we got. As far as information here from the USGS, still sitting out of yellow and advisory uh, due to some elevated earthquake activity. Uh, one of the seismograph stations, oh, that one's not working, unfortunately. So, is this one going to? It is. <laughs> it's one of the two, right? Click on this or click on the 12 hours. And, oh man, I don't know what's going on with these maps. Look at that. Something weird is going on here recently. <laughs> uh, so, what we'll do here. I wonder if it's because, um, let's see. That's just really weird. That's why it's doing that. It's probably something I'm doing, but I'm just a little on the tired side right now. Let's see what we got up here. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with that. It's really weird. Let's see, now that one's working. Okay. <sighs> as far as earthquake activity, as you can see here across the Kilauea volcano, a handful of smaller quakes, but really no major elevated activity there uh, for now. And same for the tilt meters up here. Looks like we're taking a little... Uh, it just disappeared once again. Oh my gosh, what is going on here? <laughs> Some weird stuff. Whatever. Uh, I don't know, maybe they do this on purpose here. Just to get a good laugh. Because it's not working like it's supposed to. I don't think it's my program. I mean, I've been, having, I've been using this here for uh, quite a while. But uh, I, you ha I do have the... Um, UWE tilt here specifically set up on the on the uh, link but as you can see not a whole lot of inflation going on just very minimal there's our major inflation event the loss of it there about the first of February all that magma got displaced from the summit over to the southwest rift zone and it's just magically disappeared well not disappeared still sitting down there um, still waiting on maybe um, to see what I mean we got to see what happens here it's I believe it's roughly uh, underneath this area right here. We have been seeing a little bit of migration offshore towards the Loihi Seamount recently, so I'm not for sure if we're looking at maybe uh, some further activity offshore or not, but uh, we'll definitely keep an eye on it here tonight. Okay, let's see what else we have. Anything else going on here in terms of larger movement? All right, space weather activity, activity and see what we got. Goodness, look at this. Still seeing a proton event. This is like um, probably the seventh or eighth day now that we've been consistently uh, seeing this effect here on the ionosphere, mostly in the polar regions here. I'm um, kind of surprised it's lasted this long here. Uh, now, most of the time here, you know, there's really not a whole lot of, of effect here to the to the folks here at the surface level. Uh, but for the, the folks down in the polar regions here, they could have some issues with uh, radio blackouts and whatnot. Um, radio wave signal suffers 
uh, attenuation due to the absorption by the intervening ionosphere. So radio blackouts, so to speak, here from different frequency, uh, different frequencies and whatnot can be affected up there. Uh, but really not a whole lot of other effects than that. As uh, far as the flaring activity goes here, uh, looks like we're uh, still relatively stable out here. Goodness, these things come and go. Um, they were looking uh, fairly promising here recently. Actually, it looks like this sunspot down here is starting to gather a little bit more of complexity now that it's about ready to turn out of view. And we're left with a whole lot of sunspots that really don't want to do anything out here. Uh, looks fairly calm for the most part. Uh, overall threat, 99% chance for a C flare. M flare at 55. X flare still at about 15% chance or so. Uh, but no major roars in the forecast. And even if they did have some, uh, there's no guarantee it's going to be accurate, right? <laughs> it was definitely a dud here recently in terms of the G2 uh, uh, forecast there by the professionals. But hey, that happens, right? Similar to weather out here, it just uh, just kind of happens can't get it right all the time not a whole lot of severe weather though here on the uh, surface in terms of uh, convective activity we do have uh, a storm system through california right now the west coast that's going to scoot on by make way for a little bit stronger system here as we head into the weekend and early next week look at those rainfall totals there across the area of northern california and the bay area getting hammered with some decent rainfall there uh, come early monday that's going to accumulate quite a bit there. And it looks like this low pressure system is going to hang around for a little bit and just spin around, bringing moisture up. A little break after that and maybe some colder storms coming down from the north as uh, far as precipitation accumulation here. Well, there it is. Quite a bit of rainfall there. Looks like uh, maybe two to three inches there across northern California. Higher areas, uh, higher elevation, seeing some uh, more impressive rain rates. That's just a GFS model. Uh, the... ECMWF, well, that only goes here about four days out, so it doesn't really cover everything. But either way, California is on track to get some more wet weather. That's for sure. What do we got out here? Some further activity. Again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave up the uh, earthquake watch here for now for California. Uh, there's a lot going on here across the Western Pacific on a broad scale. Uh, but... Um, you know, California is still seeing some earthquake activity out here. I see if we don't have anything uh, tomorrow, then I think we're maybe in a little break for earthquake activity out here for now. But we'll see how it goes, right? Hope everyone has a good night here. And uh, we'll catch you guys back out here tomorrow morning sometime. Seismograph stations there look fairly quiet. Um... So I added a Samoa station up here at the top just to watch some of the activity down there across the Fiji area and Tonga Trench. Um, I'll probably keep that up here just for tonight because it is somewhat elevated. But uh, yeah, these are live seismograph stations there at various locations. And uh, for now, everything looks fairly quiet without me jinxing it. Have a good night, folks, and we'll catch you guys back out here tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning, by the way. Uh, not in the morning, but in the afternoon, most likely, we'll do the member drawing giveaway. Make sure you jump on board, be a, uh, a uh, member here of this channel. Got to click on it on a, uh, I think you have to be on a PC, um, or maybe they've updated that here. You can do it on your cell phone as well. Just uh, go to the YouTube channel here, click join, and choose one of the options there of your membership. And, uh, of course, like I say, we do it every month here. We've been doing it uh, almost for two years now, giving away some prizes there. Uh, to the uh, members of course there's always extra perks and uh, extra videos and whatnot that are included in that membership we'll catch you guys out here tomorrow morning have a good night everyone stay safe